dreams are bigger, bolder, and more badass than the life you're living now. But something just keeps getting in the way. Join certified coach and former therapist Diane Wingert for the Driven Woman podcast. She'll show you how to get rid of whatever is holding you back so you can stop spinning your wheels and up-level your life. Get ready to hop in and buckle up. This is the Driven Woman podcast, and we're heading for the fast lane. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you all for joining me again for another episode of The Driven Woman. You know, I'm sure I'm not the only one that's noticed that so very much of life's wisdom is gained from looking in the rearview mirror. It really seems like it's only after the fact that we're able to gain perspective about the choices we've made, the relationships we've had, and the roads not taken. Yeah. You know, I've always been so focused on whatever was most important to me at the moment, typically my work or business goals, that I often missed much of what was going on around me. Oblivious was one of the terms that was most often used to describe me. Sometimes it was said in jest as a nickname, and other times it was probably more of an insult, depending on who was saying it and why but I definitely missed a lot of signs along the way. The ones that were meant to keep me safe. Slow down, curves ahead, falling rocks, railroad crossing. How about stop for Christ's sakes? <laughs> yeah, I missed a lot of the signs. And now that I'm at a different stage of my life, I really am trying to make practicing what I call radical self-acceptance my new norm. Now, radical self-acceptance means that not only do I forgive myself for being oblivious in the past and even sometimes now, but also not feeling ashamed, embarrassed, or guilty about the fact that that was the case. But you know, just by making the decision to accept myself no matter what isn't quite enough when there are so many times that I want to be better than I am. Now, in order to accomplish that, I have a handful of practices that I use to become more aware and more present, not just more forgiving and accepting of myself. In other words, less oblivious. One of them is called Zooming In and Zooming Out, and that's the title of this podcast because I'd like to share it with you. Now, until very recently, I lived in Los Angeles, where just about every other person you meet is in the industry. I've worked with quite a few of these people, and many of them are lovely. But the fact that people refer to it as the industry is very telling. Insiders know we're talking about the entertainment industry, and everyone else just doesn't matter. So I digress. Anyway, during my many years as a psychotherapist, I worked with quite a few clients who were in the industry, from award-winning actresses to directors, screenwriters, animators, creative directors, and even one very lovely camera operator. He was the one who actually got me thinking about how cool it would be if we could know when something important was about to happen in our lives, just like in a movie scene, when the camera zooms in on the most important details. If only your brain would do that too, so you would automatically know when to focus all of your attention in that moment. Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't it be amazing if we could experience things fully and commit them to memory in detail? The really, really important stuff. When the most important moments had passed, your brain camera would zoom out again taking in everything around you, the big picture, not just the most meaningful stuff that you were zoomed in on. I've thought about this many times and wondered, eh, I probably can't trade in my brain for one with those extra special powers, and I don't really know anyone who has them either, but what if I could do something like that? What if I could train myself to be just a little bit better at zooming in and zooming out? And what if I could teach other people to do that too? You know, most driven people like me tend to hyper-focus on their goals and on doing what they have to do to achieve them, paying so much attention to those things that everything else going on around them just fades to black. We've all been told to stop and smell the roses, but you know, I've never been a big fan of roses, and frankly, I didn't see any value in smelling them when I always thought I had something more important to do. It took quite a few years before I realized, roses or not, I was missing out on important, valuable stuff because I either didn't have the ability to zoom in on what really mattered and then zoom out again to take in the big picture, or 
I didn't understand the importance. Either way, I now do, and I practice this technique to train my brain, since it definitely doesn't come naturally. And I'm not going to beat myself up about it, and I don't want you to either. It's perfectly okay that it doesn't come naturally. I'm willing to work at the things that give me the most value, including this. So if you'd like to experiment with zooming in and zooming out, try this. Choose a place that has let's say a decent amount of activity, not completely chaotic. And these days, you're going to have to adapt all of this advice to our particular certain circumstances right now with the quarantine and the COVID pandemic and all of the reasons why we're not doing all the things that we're normally doing. A coffee shop may be off limits right now, unless there's one that you can go with a mask. If that's the case, you could go during the morning rush such as it is. It would be at least a good place to start. Try to arrive at a time that allows you to grab a table or at least a seat where you'll have at least 15 minutes to devote to the experiment. Let your gaze wander all over the objects in the place. Tables, chairs, espresso machines, bookshelves, counters, bags of coffee for sale. You get the drill. And whatever people are present, they'll have masks too. So they probably won't even really notice you staring at them. Don't focus on anything or anyone in particular, and don't linger on anything, even if it grabs you and captivates you for a moment. Resist the impulse and just let your eyes and your mind drift from thing to thing, person to person. Pay attention to the fact that your mind may want to remain on one thing or one someone longer than you want it to, and it might be very difficult for you to focus on anything at all. It might be easy, it might be hard to zoom in and then pull away. But just pay attention. Pay attention to who or what attracts you, what you can just kind of skim over or glide past, barely noticing. This is the zooming out part. And believe it or not, you are developing mindful awareness, the opposite of obliviousness. Now, the zooming in part. Allow your gaze to make a return pass around the room, going in the opposite direction of the first trip. Instead of allowing your brain to choose what you focus on, make a deliberate choice on a specific person or a physical object. It doesn't make any difference what your selection criteria are. A person that stands out, that's different in some way, or the object is particularly attractive to you. Maybe it's the display. Maybe it's a particular brand of coffee you hadn't noticed before or you can't pronounce the name of. It doesn't matter, whatever it is. But you might want to notice the why behind the what or the who you chose. This is all about cultivating awareness and cultivating curiosity about that awareness. Now, imagine that your viewfinder is in the mind narrowing, eliminating the rest of the room slowly as you become increasingly focused on this one particular person or item. Really dial it in and observe as many details as you possibly can as though you were playing a memory game. And the only way you can win is by cataloging every detail and nuance. Turn the person or object around in your mind and think about how they look from every angle, even the ones that you can't see. Imagine your mind is a camera and that you're videotaping every detail for future recall. This is what I call zooming in. Now, which one was easier? Which one was harder? Did you find yourself resisting either one or both? Have you already clicked away from this episode because the whole thing sounds insufferably boring? Well, for those of you that are still with me, notice, did you get anxious, bored, angry, frustrated, or did you just think, what's the point? What else did you notice about your experience? About your experience, not the person or the object. What value can you see in developing this ability further? Now, this is the practice that I've developed called zooming in and zooming out. And it is a form of mindfulness practice, not exactly meditation. What I love about it is after so many years of struggling with my attention deficit disorder and distractibility, I have finally learned through cultivating practices like this one that I can have a degree of control over my focus, over what I pay attention to, and how much attention I give each item. It has helped me with my anxiety, it has helped me with my distractibility, and it has helped me immensely with the kind of focus that I need to get those most important goals accomplished and not just started. 
So I hope that you have found this helpful. Stick with me for future episodes for more inspiration, motivation, and practical tips for the driven but distracted. Bye for now. You've been listening to the Driven Woman Podcast with Diane Wingert. Want more straight talk and strategy each week that will take you from spinning to winning? Don't forget to hit subscribe in your podcast player so you won't miss a single episode. Then head on over to the Driven Woman free and private Facebook group community. See you there.